Good. Now we're continuing learning the Chumash with commentary, and we'll try also to get to the half Torah today. The half Torah, which is read from uh, this week, it's read from the book of, of Samuel, the story of how <clears throat> Saul, King Saul, was picked to be a king, and which is something similar to what's going on in this week's Torah portion. You'll see. Last week, if, the, last week the, the last few days, I'm sorry, we learned that um, the um, that Korach made a big war against Aaron and Moses, and Korach said that uh, everybody could be uh, a, a big a high priest, and that we didn't need a king. We didn't need a king, and of course, he was wrong. And that, uh, but it was it was scary. It was a scary situation. He convinced all the Jewish people to go against Moses and Aaron. He convinced all of them, which that's an unusual thing to get all the Jews to agree to one thing. It's a very different, difficult thing. But Korach did it. He got all the Jews, except for Moses and Aaron, to agree that Moses had to be deposed. Moses also had a few people with him. And of course, we know what happened the tragic. Ending that uh, Korach and and, uh, and Datan Bavim were swallowed up in the ground, and there was 250 of the other people that were burned by a big fire, and then there was another 1,000, whatever is 400 something, 1,000, uh, 14,700 that were killed in some sort of a plague. And in general, it was not a very happy day. So after the whole thing is finished, so God says. Now I am going to give the Levites, the Levi, in this case, it's going to be the, the, the Kohanim, to the Berlimor. I want them to Israel at a Maser, Asher Natatilechem, Mitam. When they take Maser, the Levites get that they get one tenth of the produce as Mitam Benachalatam, but Truma, Truma, Hashem, Maser, Mina Maser. They have to also give. One tenth of the gifts that are given to them, they have to give to the Kohanim. So now we're going to learn about what's called the 24 gifts of the Kohanim. One second, am I going too far over there? Yeah, went too far. One second, one second. Yeah, too far. One second, I went too far. Here we go. Here we go. Start over here. I got to the wrong by the Ber Hashem al Moshe Le Moshe. By the Ber Hashem al Aaron, I need the title of that Mishmeret Trumati. I am giving to you my Truma. The Jewish people get the, the Kohanim. They get one one hundredth, one fiftieth of all of the holy things, and you get the gift. Now it says, if you look over here, you'll find there are twenty four gifts. It says here, that's Kenim. If you really look into it, you'll find in this parsha 24 gifts of the Kohanim, which they're hinted at, at at words, two words, three words. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I will go through the whole 24 gifts of the Kohanim that are just hinted out over here. We'll get to it in just one minute. Truma, Chala, that's also called Truma. Zeya, Lechala, Kodesh, Kodeshim, and Aish. Call korbanam all the sacrifices, all the minchatam, all of the chatat. In other words, all the meat of all these offerings that can be eaten, the kohanim are going to be the ones that are going to eat it. It says, after you burn the parts, then all of the sacrifices, like the shalmei tzibur, the minchat, chatat, asham, it says they all get the kohanim, they receive the bread offerings. Not everything is eaten, but whatever is eaten is eaten by the Kohanim. There are some offerings which are eaten by the Kohanim, like the Shlomim, and also by the owners. And there are some offerings like the, the Ola that's totally bur totally burned up. Just one second. Oh, this. Yes, Dovey, just tune in, okay? Just tune in. I'm, I'm giving the class now. Asher Yeshivu Li This is all we're going to see some of these how they're hinted at. Gezel means that something is stolen from a, 
from a non-Jew, and let's say he dies and he can't, so who do you give it back to? So it says the Kohanim, they're the ones that get it. It says, this is to talk about the Kodesh Kodeshim, the holy of holy offerings, which they aren't eaten except in the Azara. Those things are only eaten in the Azara. They're only eaten in the, the, the curtains of the tabernacle and only to the males of the Kohanim. They can't give it to their families. And we can go through this. Zetrumat matna lekal tunufotem, the lekal tunufot bnei Yisrael lechana satim. Everything that's lifted up it says, "What is this talking about? This is the the leftover from the toda offering. The toda offering is also these breads that are brought. There's forty different loaves of breads, and they're eaten by the kohanim. Kal tunufot. Anything which is lifted up. So that includes. Let's see what it is." So we have here, which means here we go. Let me look at this. I wrote this all down. Oh, so it says uh, this hints at the two lechem, the lechem upon him, the gezel agir. So let me just go through all the whole list of these 24, right? The 24, what they are. If you want to, I can show it to you. We'll see if, if but it's not necessary. Here we go. Very good. Here's the 24 gifts that are given to the Kohanim. This is after the trouble that uh, Korach made, and he said that he, everybody can be a Kohen. So the Kohanim were given these 24 gifts. And what are they? So it says generally they're divided up into four into five different categories. There are, first of all, things that are eaten, eaten by the Kohanim only in the Holy Temple. That is all the meat. From the offerings, the chatas, the chatas of and the chatas of behema, the meat from the asham, the asham toloi, the asham vadai. The asham is is when you um, certain certain sacrifice, certain sins that a person did, very special. We say it in the davening: asham toloi, asham uh, nazir, etc. Zivche shalme sibor, the the um, the the meat from the shlomim, which are brought by the, the congregation. What about the omer, the omer offering, that which is left over, they only offered a handful of this grain and the rest of it was eaten by the kohanim. Shiri matanot Yisrael, manachot Yisrael. And when the Jewish person brings a bread offering, what is not burned on the altar is eaten by the kohanim. The shtei alechem, the two breads which are brought on the holiday of Shavuot, the lechem upon him, every single week that was removed the breads from the uh, what was called the, the face bread from the 12 loaves and those were eaten by the Kohanim the, the ones from the previous week were eaten by the Kohanim and they were always fresh there was the oil from the Mitzorah, a person when he became pure he brought Mitzorah, so how many do we have those are uh, gifts that were given to the Kohen only in, they had to be eaten only in the Holy Temple. That is how many? Eight. There we have eight. Now we have five, uh, five gifts given to the Kohenim that they don't have to be eaten in the Holy Temple, but you can't eat them outside of Jerusalem. What is that? That's the, the breast and the, the, the chest and the, uh, the thigh of a shlomim offering, shlomim peace offering, what was left from a thanksgiving offering, what was left from the, uh, the, the ram that was offered by a nazir. Remember we learned about the nazir and Parshas Nasoi? The nazir was the person who uh, swore off wine, anything that had to do with wine, let his hair grow, and he couldn't defile himself with a dead person. Well, when he becomes, when he finishes his nazir, so when he becomes uh, defiled and has to start over again so he brings a ram this is eaten by the coin the firstborn of every animal the firstborn of every um, of every mother the firstborn has to be given to the coin nowadays we redeem it the firstborn 
and also Bikurim, the first fruits that are brought up. These have to be eaten in Jerusalem. This is another five, right? So we had eight and five is 13. We have how much, how many to go? Another 11. Let's see. Truma, like we said before, one fiftieth of all produce or one hundredth, depends how much. The Trumas Meiser, also what the Levites, they have to give one tenth of what they have. They have to give that. Because the Levites are supported by the people, the, by the and they get Meiser Rishon, so they have to give one tenth of that to the coin. Chala, <clears throat> when whenever bread was made, so everybody has to take. We still that do, do that today. We have to take a portion of the challah <coughs> and get, and um, the, these are eaten. They can be eaten um, outside of the temple, but not outside of the land of Israel. These that I'm saying now, right? The first the first eight that I said have to be eaten in the temple. The next five that I said would be kulim, etc. They have to be eaten in Jerusalem. Now these next five that I'm talking about now, truma and etc. They have to be eaten. In the land of Israel, anywhere in Israel. There's Rashi's a gaze. Also, when, they, when you shear your sheep, you have to give one portion to the Kohen also. And a Sada Achuza, there is a portion of it that has to be, a portion of the land has to be given to the Kohanim as well. Those five are in the land of Israel. Then there's five more. We have six more to go. Five more that can be eaten anywhere in the world. What is that? That is the, the portion of every animal that's slaughtered. You're supposed to give the arm, the, the, the cheek, and the stomach has to be given to the coin. Anywhere you slaughter. If you slaughter it in Russia or any place, yeah, China, you have to, if there's a coin there, you have to give these portions to the coin. Pigeon a ben, right? We do that even now. A firstborn male child, firstborn male child, that there was no children born before, no females, and he there was no uh, uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, miscarriages or anything before. And there's laws of what is a pigeon or But the firstborn male has to be redeemed by a coin. You give the coin a certain amount of money, and you say that what you, what you, the, the, the money is in the place of my, of my son, and that's redeeming my son. The firstborn of a donkey, we don't do that, but the firstborn of a donkey, you're also supposed to redeem. The gezel hager, yeah, we talked about that before, right? That if something is stolen from a, a convert and the convert dies, you can't give it back to him. So that goes to the Kohen. And a haramim, haramim means any person who devotes anything, donates anything. He says, this is, I donate this to holiness. So it goes to the Kohanim. That's five. We have one more to go. And that is all of the skins of the animals of course, you can't eat them. Who gets them? Do you have to burn them, throw them out the garbage? No. They go to the coin. The coin can use it. You can, there's skins. You can sell them. There it goes. Skins, you can use it. Okay. That are the 24 off, 24 gifts which were given to the coin, which was merited because of the, uh, the argument of Korach that he wanted to depose the coin in. So God said, Korach is wrong. And not only that, I'm going to give you the Kohanim, 24 gifts. And that's what it is. I just enumerated them. You can look it up also if you want to. Call Chalev Yitzar. All of the best of the oil, the, the, the wine, the wheat, it all has to go to the Kohen. Etc. And that's going to be the 24 gifts that we're talking about in this week's, in the end of the Torah portion. And we have the other commandments also that the Levites and the Kohanim, they have to watch over the Holy Temple. Right? We have to watch over the Holy Temple. And all of these gifts, that's how the Torah portion ends. This week's, let me just, just one moment. There are also other commandments which are in this Torah portion. And we can find it in this book of Mitzvot Hashem in the book, but I'll just read it to you, right? That's also,
I'll also read this, read them to you. There are in this week's Torah portion, there are nine commandments. Five of them are positive commandments. Four of them are negative commands. And we went through most of them already. But I'll just quickly go over, because I want to go over also the Haftorah. Very interesting Haftorah. Okay, so we went over the, 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 the Torah portion, mostly. You look inside if you want to, but we went over the story of Korach, the battle between Korach and his group against Moshe and Aaron. And just now we talked about the reward that Aaron and Moses received. Just give me one moment here. There we go. All right, here, is, here are the commandments. And not, not every Torah portion has commandments in it, but this one does. It has, like I said, nine commandments. Number one commandment is there has to be guards on the holy temple. Honor guards. They have to be guards. Like it says, Shamru et mishmartacha u mishmeret kal ha'ohel. That's a positive commandment. That's one. The negative commandment. A negative commandment not to avoid or forget to watch the temple. In other words, there's a positive commandment and a negative commandment in the same, same one commandment. There has to be guards around the temple. And there's a special way to do it. The, the Kohanim would watch from the inside, the Levites would watch from the outside, etc. Because it's the palace of the king. So it's a positive commandment to guard the temple, put these guards around, and it is a, a, a prohibition to avoid guarding, to forget what a negative commandment. Not to, the Levites should not do the work of the Kohanim. And the Kohanim should not do the work of the Levites. The Kohanim, they do the sacrificing, etc. They light the, the menorah and the, um, they eat the bread, like we said, the other 24. And the Levites are not allowed to do it. The Levites, on the other hand, they do, they do the singing, etc. Because in, in, the, in the Holy Temple, and other helps that they do. they open up the they, they open up the gates and etc. That's what the Levites do, and the Kohanim are not allowed to do it. If they change places, the punishment is death, negative death from heaven. Negative commandment: <clears throat> not to uh, no one who is not a Kohen, a person who is not a Kohen. A negative commandment. If you are not a Kohen, you are permitted, you are pro prohibited from working in the temple. Like it says, Zar lo yikrab alechem. A Zar means anyone who is not from a direct descendant of Aaron. Punishment? Not good. Either person who gets beaten, etc., etc. It depends what he does. There are certain things, though, that a, that a non kohen can do. A non kohen is allowed to slaughter an animal. He's allowed to remove the skin from the animal. He's allowed to cut up the animal. And he can bring wood to the Mizbeh. We just learned those people who are doing Dafa Yomi. We learned this in the book of, in, in Yoma. They can bring wood to the altar. All these things a non kohen can do. And in fact, it's also, uh, most people say that a, a non kohen if he had a long stick or something, he could light the menorah, of the, or if the Kohen brought the, the menorah out to him. Okay, so from the nine commandments, how do we have, how many do we have now? We have one, two, three, four. Here's the fifth one. <clears throat> if a Yisrael, a, 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 someone who's not a, a Levi and he's not a Kohen, <clears throat> if he has a firstborn son, as soon as his firstborn son is born, when he reaches 30 days old, <clears throat> you have to redeem it from the coin. You get a coin, you give the coin some money and say, take the money instead of my son, etc. It has to be up to th exactly 30 days. That's called Pidyon Haben. Pidyon Haben, we learn from this week's Torah portion. That's five commandments. We, how many do we have altogether? Nine. Here we have Another commandment, negative commandment. Negative commandment, do not redeem a 
kosher animal. Because it's a bachor, a short lo yipadeh. You're not allowed to, it, according to this, the, there is a positive commandment that says that a, a firstborn donkey you are supposed to redeem. In any case, he only lists the negative commandment that donkey, yes, but any other animal, no, it's forbidden to redeem any other animal. In other words, to take a coin, whatever, and to say, this is my first born, I am redeeming it. No, in fact, you have to give the animal to the Kohen. Yes. Uh, three more commandments we have. A positive commandment that the Levites must serve in the temple. Over the lady he. Over the lady he. This is the service who, I'm sorry, this is the service of the Kohanim. Of, of the Levites, I'm sorry. This is the, a Levite must serve in the temple. Next command, positive commandment. You have to take what's called Miserishon, one-tenth of your produce, and give it to the Levi. And last of the commandments, the Levi, the Levi that he receives from you, one-tenth of your produce, he has to give one-tenth of that to the coin. That's called Trumat Miser. He has to give Truma from his Miser. Miser mina Miser, like it says. Good. So that's the nine commandments that are in this Torah portion. That pretty much sums up the portion. You can... Um, uh, and we learned about the 24 gifts of the Kohanim. The rest you can look up yourself in a second. Now let's look a little bit at this very interesting um, uh, story about of the, let's see, how do I get to this here? Oh, why not? Like this. Huh? There. Okay, do you see this? Yes, you can see this. All right, here we go. The, here we have the story of the anointing of King Saul. <clears throat> okay, Saul was a very great man, and there's a whole story that the Jewish people were clamoring. They wanted to have a king, and they demanded a king, and God appeared to the prophet Samuel, who he was leading the Jewish people. Now, who... Who exactly ruled the land of Israel before King David? The Jewish people entered the land of Israel with Joshua, right? Well, from Joshua until King David, and there was the first temple was built, was 440 years. 440, who ruled in that time? 440 years, there was no kings, no kings. So until David, so well, right before David, there was... Saul, King Saul. Some people say that King Saul only ruled for one year. Saul is a very tragic story. We'll learn a little bit about him. It was a very, very tragic story, King Saul. He was a greater person. And some, according to some opinions, he was greater than King David. But because he didn't come from the tribe of Judah, and he made this very small, really, I mean, normally you think really insignificant mistakes. But that was enough to disqualify him for to be the king. And we'll, we'll, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Here we're talking about the beautiful beginning that King Saul had. So I, what happened with King Saul? The story was is that um, <clears throat> the, the God came to this prophet Samuel, and he said that you're going to meet up with somebody who's going to be the king of Israel. And sure enough, right after that, there came this beautiful, strong, handsome, intelligent, humble man by the name of Saul, Shaul. And Shaul uh, came up to uh, Samuel, the prophet Sh Shmuel, Shaul. And he said, to Sh uh, Shmuel said, well, who are you? He said, well, I'm just looking for my father's donkeys. My father left my donkeys. So Shmuel said, listen, come and sit with us. He had this all these honorable high holy people sitting with him. And he said to him, finally, listen, congratulations, you're the king. He poured oil over his head. He says, you're the king, keep it to yourself. 
So after that, there was this war. There was this uh, king. What was his name? King uh, Nachash or something. Yeah, what is this? Nachash. That was the king. Was it was Nachash. And King Nachash he laid siege to a certain town, and the, he he had his huge army, and the people said, uh, you know, what are we going to do? So the king, we'll have to give up. We'll surrender. So he said, we'll surrender. He said, okay, I'll accept your surrender, but only on condition that you let me put one eye out of everybody. So they said, oh, we'll give us seven days to think about it. They sent a messenger. The messenger came to Shaul, the king, and he gathered an army and he devastated this army of this Nachash guy. So then everybody said, wow, this is our man. You know, this is him. <clears throat> so, okay. Shmuel So Shmuel said, okay, the Samuel, the prophet, said, let's go to this place called Gilgal and we'll make a new king. Gilgal was the place where the holy temple was right in the beginning. That's where the, the, when they came into the land of Israel, so they... <clears throat> so here we have the Ralbag. He says that maybe that's where the, he said, Shmuel said, okay, let's make it at Gal Gilgal as though to show that now we're just beginning the kingship. Up to now, there was no real king in the land of Israel because Shmuel, he was leading the people very well. Now, it's true, it is a, it is a commandment. One of the commandments is to make a king. It's a commandment to make a king. And the people demanded a king. So, and you're going to see that Samuel, that Shmuel, Samuel, gets really angry at the people. And the reason is because they wanted a king to be like everybody else. They didn't want a king to elevate them. They wanted a king that would take care of their their day to day needs. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, all the people went to Gilgal, and they coronated Shmu Shaul. This is the haftor of of this Shabbos, right? In front of God in Gilgal, and they made all sorts of sacrifices over their Shlomim in front of God, and they were all happy, and the people of Israel were happy. Very much. In the time when the tabernacle, this is the way I understand it, in the time when the tabernacle was in, how did it work? When the Jews came into the land of Israel, they built the tabernacle, they set it up in Gilgal. And then that was 14 years. And then they moved it to another place called Shiloh. And there it was like 369 years. And then after that, they went to, where was it? To, to Nov and to Gibbon. Gibbon. They went to Nova Gibbon. Nova Gibbon, it was there for, what, 56 years or something. It was there for a certain... Okay, when it was in the, in the time when... Oh, I'm sorry. In the time when it was in Shiloh, this 369 years, the Jewish people could not offer any offerings up outside of the temple. There was things called bummers. They couldn't offer it up. But when it was in Gilgal, in the first 14 years, and in the last 50-whatever years, they could offer up offerings and this was in the last offering so they went back to Gilgal the first place and they were offering up offerings even though they, they, they offered up offerings because it was permissible in that in those days right only in the in the intermediary times this middle 300 whatever 69 years they could not offer up offerings outside but now it was after that time they could and that's what they did they went to Gilgal and they offered up all these offerings <clears throat> Shmuel, I'll call Yisrael. Shmuel said to all the Jewish people, here, listen, I listened to your voice. The prophet Samuel said, I listened to your voice, to everything that you said to me, and I made for you a king. And now, here's the king. He's going in front of you, and I am already old. And the Vasavati, and I have, you know, I'm getting weak, frail. Oh, Banai hinam itchem, and is with you. Bani salach to live nechem. I. There we go. And I have been leading you up to now. Okay, Shmuel says I've been leading you up to now. Mina arai arayomazeh. You remember the story of of the Prophet Shmuel that talked with Chana, and that we read on Rosh Hashanah that Chana came in and she prayed. This is the, she asked for a son. The son was Shmuel. Now Shmuel has been ruling 
over the Jewish people for a long time. And he said, I've been ruling over you from since I was a young child until now. Now Shmuel, he didn't, he didn't pass away that old. You know, he, he died like he was 57 years old. It says that Rebbe, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, go on. And the Agar. In the um, Abelea, Rabbi Lazar ben Azaria says, I am like Ben Shivim Shan. It says he was a, a, a Gilgul. He was a, um, a, 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 a incarnation of Shmuel. His years were added onto Shmuel. Okay, in any case, Shmuel said, now I am walking in front of you. Now, here, here he is. This is what you ask for. Here is Saul, Shaul. Here's a king. He's beautiful, he's tall, he's strong, he's intelligent. He <clears throat> nay, anubi, now, okay, ready? Now answer me in front of me, in front of your, his anointed one. Ready, Jewish people? An ox of yours did I ever take? A donkey did I ever use? Did I ever cheat anybody? Did I ever, ever flatter anybody? Who did I ever take any bribe? Did I ever hide myself from anyone and ignore someone? Right? I took something from anyone and I didn't receive it. Tell me if you if if I took something from somebody, I'll give it back to them. Right? Let's see. Anybody, I owe somebody something. And everyone said, No, you never cheated us, you never flattered us, you never took anything from anybody. He said to them, God is my witness and my anointed one is the witness today that i you i never took anything from your hands not at all and vayomer aid and he said i bat call he said there was a voice that came up from heaven and it said aid i am a witness this is one of the three places where a ruach kodesh came and judge something in this physical world, says Rashi. Shmuel said to the people, Naomi Shmuel Alam, Asher Asarat Moshe Bet Aaron, he said to this, said to the people, God that gave you Moses and Aaron, and that took your fathers from Egypt, right? In other words, by Moshe, that God, by means of Moshe, and Aaron, God took you out of Egypt. And now <clears throat> stand and judge in front of God at call at Sit Kos Hashem Asher Asad, the wonderful things that God did with you and with your forefathers. Let's give thanks. Batai wants to say, Hoyle, since Mitsudas David, since that you knew, so. <clears throat> now I'm going to stand and I'm going to reprove you because of all that God did for you did you really and, and the victories that he gave you did you really pay him when Yaakov came to Egypt and your forefathers cried out to God and God sent Moshe and Aaron and they took your fathers out of Egypt and they brought you to this very place here we are and you forgot God Right, and they forgot God. They forgot. They forgot Jewish people. They forgot God, and byim korotam biad sisro. And God gave you over into sisro, saratzava, and the other police team, and the ad moav, and you fought in them, and you cried out to God, and you said we sinned, and God, and that we serve the Baalim. This is the the sun gods, whatever the Ashtaros, some. Gods of the gods of the stars or something. And now save us, God, from our enemies. And God send you Yurubal, Yurubaal. Who is Yurubal? It says that's Gidon. Gidon, Gideon. You know the story of Gideon? Read it. It's really amazing. The, how he defeated the he had an army of, I think, what was it? 30,000 men. You have to read it. I forget the numbers. He had an army of 30,000 men. And God said it's too many people. Too many people. Anybody who's uh, afraid, go home. So they went home. Now he's got 3,000 people. God said, eh, too many. 
So they said, tell them to go and drink water. Anybody that got down on their knees to drink water said probably they're used to getting down on their knees to bow down to idols. Send them home. <clears throat> and he was left with like 300 people against some massive army of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, who knows. And, and they won. That's the whole thing. They put fire inside of, inside of pitchers and they blew horns and they, the enemy got scared. Gidon, that's Yerubaal. And also God sent Badan. Who was Badan? Badan, this is Shimshon, Samson. Samson was the last of the judges. And Yiftach. <clears throat> Yiftach was Kali Olam, Shlosha Hamure Olam. He sent, God sent, Yiftach was in the middle. He was also, now these were the, <clears throat> the judges the people that judged the Jewish people, there was like 13 of them, I think, 13 judges, 15 of judges. They were the ones that ruled the Jewish people in these 440 years. And it was 13 stories, a repetition of the same thing over and over again. Just the name has changed. What happened? Exactly what it said over here. God sent, first of all, there was Joshua. Everything was going really good. And then all of a sudden, Joshua, he passed away. So the people started to sin and they did it. So God sent someone else to save them. And then they did, and, and he fought their battles and they won. And the people did tshuva. And then, you know, they sort of got used to it. They got successful. And then they started doing sins again. And their old uh, savior, uh, whatever, he passed away. And then, so they cried out to God and God sent uh, another person to save them. And he saved them and they won and they did tshuva. And then they lapsed back into idolatry and they screamed out to God for another leader. And he sent them another leader that did tshuva and God saved them. And then they lapsed into idolatry. And this was the same story over and over again. And Badana, Yiftach. And then he sent Shmuel. Shmuel, that's now. And he saved them from your enemies that were around. And now you're sitting calmly. Now, and then came Nachash. That's the story I just told you about. And he came and you said, and we, 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 uh, I saved you, right? Uh, Saul, King Shaul saved you. And Batomu, you said, Li, lo, ki melechim locholenu. He said, listen, we want a king. Enough of this. We want a king. And God, he'll keep melechim lochalechem, v'ashem elekechem malachem. You already have God as your king. What do you have to have? A regular king. And now, see, here's the mele, here's the king that you wanted. Right? You can. And you asked for. And God has given now you a king. You want a king? Here he is. If, you're, if you fear God and you serve God and you listen to his voice and you do not rebel against him and you also come at him, also you and your king, that this, that God, rule, that God is ruling over you, everything is going to be okay. But if you don't listen to the voice of God and you rebel against God, then God is going to be against you and against your fathers. Uh, what does it mean, your fathers? Your king, that's what it means. It says your king, that's called the father. So now, now stand and see this amazing thing that God is going to do. I'm going to show you a little miracle, says, king, says uh, Samuel. This is now the time of harvest of wheat. Now, time of harvest of wheat, it's very bad if rain falls down in that time. I'm going to call to God. There's going to be thunder and there's going to be rain. And you're going to know that God doesn't like you. You did a lot of bad things in the eyes of God that, because you demanded a king. But what's the word about demanding a king? Like I said before, you demanded a king because you want to be like the other nations. That's not the reason you should have a king. Shmuel called to God, and God, sure enough, made all sorts of thunders, and rain came gushing down on that day. It was, wasn't, was not the rain season. And everybody became very afraid of God and Shmuel. And the people said to Shmuel, please say, pray to God and we shouldn't die because we, we deserve to be killed for all of the bad things that we've done, namely and especially that we requested a king. And Shmuel said to the people, don't be afraid. You did all these bad things, but al tasuru From now on, it'll be different. Don't go away from God. God is forgiving you totally, and serve God 
with all of your hearts. Do not turn away from them. <clears throat> After the empty gods, whatever, that won't, will not help, and etc. <clears throat> Don't go after these foreign gods. They're not going to help you. It's just going to, right in the beginning, maybe you think you're getting something done, but you're not. Why? And this is the end. Key, because Lo God will never reject his people. Why not? Ba'avur Shemogodl, for the sake of his great name. You are his people. That's it. No matter what you do, you're always his people. <clears throat> it's like a, a, you know, a, a very important person, uh, you know, a big rabbi, and he has a son that goes and does all sorts of terrible sins and things like that. And everybody says, wow, you're the, the son of this father. They go up to the father. You have a son. That's really your son? I don't <laughs> That's your son. He says, listen, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is a person can change his name. A son can change his name. But God is never going to change his name. You are always going to be the sons, the servants, the partners of God. That's the way it's going to be. God is never going to ab abandon you for the sake of his great name. Because God decided to do a favor to you and make you his people. And that is the haftorah for this Shabbat. Sudasion, God will never leave you. Well, God desired to make you his people. Therefore, no matter what you can what you do, you will never be able to escape this, and you won't want to escape it. This is the biggest honor that can possibly be in the world. And um, that, after all, is the reason for in the world anti-Semitism. One of the reasons that the world knows that the Jews are God's people. And that they're here for a purpose, to make the world into a perfect place, whether they want to or not, whether they know it or not. And now, says Lubavitch Rebbe, this is the generation of Mashiach, and all of the Jews are going to wake up, return to consciousness. That's called tshuva, return. Return to consciousness, and we'll all dance together with Mashiach now. Tomorrow, God willing, 8.15, there will be a class. We'll finish the sicha in Devar Malchus. God bless you all. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now.